Hello and welcome back to the Zoho Creator How-To Series. Um, so today's video, we are going to be picking up where we left off after you've written your first line of code, which was the hide on create, load of the form. We hid these fields and just to refresh your memory, we will just go back here and we notice that we have our username here and we cannot see any of the other fields that we had added to this form. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to get these fields that we have hidden here in our code to show based on the user input of the username. So how would we do that? So let's go back to our workflows and we're just going to X this out here and hit done. And what we're going to do is we have one workflow. We're going to create a new one here to achieve the showing of those fields. We're going to achieve that by showing the user of those, the uh, showing of those fields based on the input of the username. So let's go ahead and do that now. So again, we're on the add user form. We want when a record is created, when to trigger the workflow. And on this, we want to make sure we select user input of a field because we want to, on the user input, uh, on the input of the user name, we want to go ahead and show, right? So now you notice a new choice has come up here where we have to choose the field that we want to run this script on. So we will choose user name and then we will go ahead and give it a name. You can name it whatever you like. Once you've given this a name, you can go ahead and create the workflow. Okay, and just as before, we're going to add a new action and we're going to say, now is where we are going to put some interesting things here. So we know the field here is the username. So how do we want to do this on user input? So this is where we're going to use an if statement. So an if statement, and I'm assuming that you have some basic knowledge of programming, and I'm not going to go too much into detail as that. This is more just to show you how to do things within here. Um, if you'd like a video on some more basic programming concepts, uh, I'd be happy to do, to do that. Just leave some comments down below. So for here, let's write our first if statement. And the beauty of this is this is going to try to help you and understand what is it that you're trying to do. So we're just going to simply write if. And if you notice, it gives you a little example here of what you're trying to do. Okay. And so we would just select if, and then it gives us a variable, an operator, and what is the expression. Okay. So it's, it's asking you, what is it that you want to select? So in this case, what I want to do is start familiar, familiarizing you with typing this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to type in input dot, and then select the field. In this case, it is the username. So if input dot username is what? So basically, what are we trying to tell it to do? And you have choices equal to not equal to lesser than, greater than, lesser or lesser than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So what we want to do is say, if the username is not equal to, and then what we're gonna do here is we're just going to put here two uh, quote, double quotes, okay? So here, now this may seem strange, but that's okay. Uh, let me just explain to you what's happening here. So we're saying if the input dot username is not equal to blank, we want that to do something down here. Okay. So if username is not blank, we want to do what you guessed it show. And then we have the fields that we want to show. So just as before, we have a few fields to show. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we already have the username showing. So now we want to go ahead and show these fields. So just as before, we want to hit Control, Shift, D. 
okay, to add our field. So we will want to show the title, show the phone number, show the notes, show the status, show the date added, and show the email, and we can just get rid of this last one down here. And then go ahead, and this again is giving you a little detail of what this does. And then we'll just go ahead and save this. Now, if you noticed, when we attempted to save this, we are getting an error down here. And this is, this is a good use case because I forgot to give you some vital information here. This is telling you that there's an error here at line number one. Now, this is basically saying that it cannot do this with a string value because the user the username actually has multiple fields associated with it as in an array. So what this is telling us is we would need to try something to use something like field name, whatever the field name is, dot first name, which is absolutely correct. So what we would do in this case is we could do two things, okay? We can go on the back of username and then put a dot, and then it gives us some choices here. Prefix, last name, suffix, first name. So now if we put first name here, it will allow us to go ahead and update. Let's see, and it does, okay. But we don't want just the first name, right? We want to make sure that that name is has the full value before we actually go ahead and show these fields. So a simple way, there's, there's a few ways to do this, like I said. We can do it this way, where we have input.username.firstName is not equal to blank. Another option is we can go and put the last name. We can also do both. So how that would work is we would put first name, and then we're going to use an and. So what we're going to say is we want both the first name and last name not to be blank. So how you would do that is using the and uh, operator, <clears throat> which is a double ampersand. And you can see as soon as I type that in, it said, okay, well, what else would you like to consider in order to run this block of code down here? So like we did in the first step, we're going to do input dot username. Just select it. And now you see how as soon as I select the username, it's jumping over here. But we want one more thing here. So we're going to add dot last name is not equal to and then the empty string okay now let's go ahead and attempt to save that we'll update and indeed it does update okay so now let's go ahead and actually test to see if this works okay so we are here in our live view and what we will do is we will go ahead and test this so we're going to reset the form okay and now we're actually going to add some test here, and then we're going to click out of here to see what it's gonna do. Click anywhere you like. You see it does nothing, but you saw there was a small action there if you, if you saw it, it was pretty quick. So now let's put a second something in the last name, and there you go. Indeed it does show us because our username test and user now both have values, it will show all the corresponding fields. Now, here's something to note. If we take this out, test, you notice it didn't do anything. So in our next video, we're gonna discuss how to make this responsive so that if any of these actions are not true, we can go ahead and make sure it shows and hides and it's responsive to show and hide these fields. So I think this is a good stopping point here. 
congratulations you made it this far i think that's it for here be sure to like comment and subscribe for more videos like this in the future coming your way thanks for watching